five opening logos. I wonder where he is right now. Oh, he's in one half of a continent. Gotcha. It takes a minute and 20 seconds for this motorcycle to emerge from this tunnel and drive 300 feet down the road as this camera tracks it. Hey man, just park that thing anywhere. I'm sure it being in the middle of the road won't ever be a problem. Idris Elba isn't in a better movie in this scene. No one knows how these soldiers infiltrated an island fortress like this with all the security and guards, but they just must be that good. Also, how amazing is it they attacked right after Moreau said the boy wasn't safe here? The soldiers run down the hallway scene requires four cuts all in the same shot. You know, to make it more exciting. Who the f*** is this chick? Sudden important trick is sudden. Nadia shoots at good guy Moreau after totally not using it when the bad guy was pointing a gun at her just a second ago. Moreau's bike was definitely not parked on the very edge of this thing when he came in. Shut up! Movie kills Giles in the first three and a half minutes. <laughs> Unlikely. Ah, narration over opening credits after four and a half minutes of incomprehensible bullshit. Animated rehash of the first movie, including cartoon ass. It's kind of funny. It's on YouTube. Check it out. No, it isn't. No, it isn't, and no, I shouldn't. They made a second one of these. Reenactment of the first movie's contract signing scene contains many factual errors. Yeah, that is right. I'm the guy who made the deal with the devil. Except in the other movie, you barely got cut, and a drop of your blood just happened to land on the signature line. So it's not like you did any real signing, or anything that would hold up as a contract in any court of law. Another cartoon ass? Are asses inherently this funny to show two of them in 45 seconds? But you did something you wouldn't want the writer to see. A white lie? An illegal download. So the Ghost Rider concerns himself with white lies and illegal downloads? Doesn't the white lie portion of that cover nearly everyone? Since when does he care about that shit? My brothers are dead, as should I be, if not for the intervention of God. So that's hilarious, impossible, and looks fake as shit. Not to mention geographically and spatially dishonest. Also, how the f did he find Johnny if they don't even know each other? Does Moreau have Ghost Rider detecting powers? So many times I've tried to keep the writer from coming out, but tonight I need him. And we won't show you that because our budget is f***ing bottom shelf. Jesus, they left the town during the day, but it took until the darkest of night for them to finally make their move on Nadia. I've got people after Danny and me, so just let me go. I'm the people after you. How does she not know that? Kerrigan will now hesitate and get distracted by noises so that he doesn't shoot Nadia. And Johnny's hideout just happens to be close enough to reach this spot at whatever speed he was going to prevent it at the last second. 40 seconds of Here's the Ghost Rider drama, in which none of the kill happy criminals even attempt to shoot him. This looking into the random bad guy's soul scene takes so long you'll swear it was just to pad the movie's runtime. Minor cut from the kid's cheek allows a drop of blood to fall just so the Ghost Rider can get distracted. And no other blood comes out, so what the f***? And wouldn't the open wound be enough for him to sense it? Considering how easily the Ghost Rider can kill fools, why did he bother spending all that time on that one dude a minute ago? Jesus! Mysterious new unexplained slugbuster weapon is actually effective against the Devil's Soul Collector. Get him in the car! Let's not bother taking Nadia with us, or killing her, so that the Ghost Rider has a lead he can follow. Oh, come on. And the freaking door is open too? Why is Nadia here? Did the Ghost Rider put her on the back of his motorcycle and drive her here? And did he do that instead of simply chasing after the bad guys? Are you telling me they actually had the power to hurt him enough that his demon self was like, F*** this, time to get some medical care. Or did she drive them here? That can't be either because they steal a tow truck later. Also, hours after the incident, what are the odds that this chick and the Ghost Rider would both be in the hallway of the same hospital at this exact moment? I just uploaded a little program. A firewall. Our friend on the motorcycle won't be able to sense him now. To track him. Was he able to track him before? I just thought he sensed some evil shit going down and went after it. Not, oh my god, I can sense an important kid in my general area. Also, this little thing the devil just did, he just made that up, right? That particular power did not exist until he decided it did. And if he's got that kind of power, why doesn't he just program the kid to get in a car and drive to his location? He still may be able to find you, so uh, I suggest you keep moving. So what's the f***ing point? God damn, these two are always in the same place as each other. Why did that one weapon cause such lasting damage on the devil's right-hand man? Why does any weapon do damage? Guns don't, but these slugbuster things make him a hobbling mess. Some random girl gets the jump on the motherfucking Ghost Rider. This must be the least busy hospital in the entire world, where this kind of confrontation can happen in front of ambulances. But you know something. You're what we call in the screenwriting trade a lucky break. Let's go. Also, we don't want the audience to know anything yet. But he asked for something in return. Son. I hear he's supposed to turn into Keanu Reeves and win every case as a lawyer later in life. No, I get it. You're the devil's baby, mama. Movie thinks this casual joke will forgive the fact that this is exactly what she is in a legitimate plot development. Why does the devil walk on earth in human form anyway? Ah, sudden narration! Also, hour and a half movie goes cheap animation for this sequence because, well, shit, you're not paying that much attention at this point, are you? Maybe just passes on from body to body, down through history, waiting for the perfect fit. Easy Jerry Springer joke is easy. Other acceptable easy jokes include Paris Hilton, Kim Kardashian, and Nickelback. On earth? He's weak. His powers are limited. Why is that? 
Oh, who cares? As long as we somewhat know the mystical spiritual rules and powers, I'll f***ing forget it. Oh, don't worry, this definitely fatal car crash will fail to kill anyone important. Oh, sure, now physics works. The rider's going to come out. He'll destroy whoever's got it coming. Even though this movie told us earlier, the rider comes out whenever it's in the mere presence of whoever's got it coming. In the presence of evil, I change into a monster. In his eyes. You're no different than Kerrigan. If you're lucky though, I'll just stand and stare at someone else for five minutes so that you can get away or pick up better weapons. Also, if she's no different, why is he not ghost ridering out and collecting her soul? I'm not afraid of you. Yeah, we should be. Movie rips off the Edward and Bella from Twilight. You're a bad man! And this thing, the writer, he feeds on them and- Crazy Nicolas Cage is entertaining to watch. Half-assed Crazy Nicolas Cage is simply bad acting. The party! I know the place. Of course you do. I don't know why this asshole is fighting becoming the Ghost Rider. He can't win this any other way. And why is his bike Battle Cat when he isn't even He-Man yet? Also, Nadia said she knew where the quarry was, but he's definitely not following anybody. And she's not following him and couldn't if she tried. So how the hell does he know where to go right now? Did she give him directions, even though he was well ahead of her running a minute ago? Well, they're not speeding, but these black tailgating SUVs are still cliche in their evilness. This chick doesn't need any help from Ghost Rider or anyone. She's a fucking magical teleporting superhero of justice. <laughs> Why didn't you just do that in the first place? Wait a minute, do you mean with the breakneck speed with which he was riding his motorcycle, Nadia beat him here? Shit! That was awesome. <laughs> yeah, but doesn't it bother you that you basically killed this guy before and now he's back with a vengeance? He doesn't need medical attention this time, though. This is because the movie no longer needs an 18-minute break in the action to explain the plot. Reload. Because it's clearly such an effective weapon. <laughs> Ghost Rider pauses to scare the audience. He clearly could have done this earlier and ended the movie, but he was way more interested in staring down that unimportant day player for five minutes. I'm sorry, did that hurt? Attention screenwriters, when your villain constantly spouts stuff like this, and Showtime, and Get Some, he is no longer a character. He is a guy who says things he heard other people say in movies once. Also, this asshat is taunting the writer after two failed attempts to kill him with the best weapon he's got on hand. So, more shooting. These guys have seen the Ghost Rider get pummeled by two javelin missiles and shot multiple times, and is clearly a byproduct of something distinctly non-Jesus. But they keep the faith that the bullets will work instead of running away or shooting the guy that got them in this mess. I've got to give these henchmen credit. They saw the flaming demon bastard of machinery here, and they didn't give up hope that the battle was lost. Me? I left this place and changed my identity an hour ago, but I'm not fit for this business. Does it hurt? You're taunting now? Can you not just kill this dickhead and call it a day? Ryder leaves Kerrigan alive for no good reason at all. Even the Ghost Rider you've presented to us in two movies so far does not have that kind of superpower. And we definitely know he can't go anywhere without making lots of noise. This obvious approaching vehicle never arrives. I wish I had that, cliche. It was a bee. I thought it was gonna sting your face. Shit like this, ladies and gentlemen, is why this movie is an hour and a half instead of a tidy 42 minutes. Your leg's all healed, huh? All by itself. <laughs> yeah, but that scar on his face took days to heal for some reason, despite his amazing devil child powers. I think it's in Cage's contract that his character has to do at least three oddball things for no reason just to get a laugh. I've already contacted Moreau. He's going to catch up with us on the road. What, did you hit him up on his celly? Did you guys exchange emails? We got to move fast, because the ones who are hunting us, they're not done. Oh, I could have killed them before I caught up to you, but that would have been too easy. You were to bring me Nadia's son. Replacement sequel Satan is replacement. Also, Satan can easily find his henchmen, but cannot easily find his own son without help. Um, I'm pretty sure we saw medical and police authorities on this scene a moment ago, right? Yeah, we did. Giving you power. The power of decay. Awesome. Sounds slow acting and fairly useless against a skeleton ghost rider, but thanks. I want that boy, Carrigan. Now you've got no excuses. Just don't touch him. Or wait, can he control his decaying power? Because I'm confused. Just a minute ago when he didn't know he had the power, Rourke had him touch this wood and it instantly disintegrated. So how does the guy drive, kidnap devil children, or masturbate? Maybe there's a reason the devil has to hire some other asshole to go get his son, but the movie doesn't offer it. Which makes this seem kind of stupid. This guy failed, so give him superpowers and set him off to fail again. Brilliant! Seems like the perfect do-it-yourself-if-you-want-it-done-right scenario, given the devil's apparent power. Having a father-son-style conversation while taking care of a motorcycle cliché. The machine, last night, you made it change. That's how it works. Whatever he rides changes with him. Doesn't that sound like something we should have been told in the first movie? Yeah, it does. Fire peeing. Also, hey guys, we need to get in the studio to do that fire peeing segment. By God, this movie will fail miserably without a pee fire. So I want to see you all in here at the studio at 5 a.m. sharp. This power that we have comes from a dark place. 
but it's not who we are. Discount Batman Begins dialogue. I realize he's the devil's son and probably can't die or something. Still, the mother somehow allows this dangerous motorcycle play without one person involved wearing a helmet. Also, the interstates of this great nation's highways are completely devoid of traffic today, so it's easy to do motorcycle stunts and not have a care in the world. Watching Ghost Rider do wheelies with Satan's kid makes me wonder, how the f*** did this movie ever get made? Yeah, you see, this is the problem with having the power to disintegrate anything you touch. By the way, what about that steering wheel? The director said, let's have you disintegrate an apple. It'll make you look like even more of an asshole. Ha ha, Twinkies are indestructible. I'd laugh, except The Simpsons did it, and did it like in the early 90s. Silly customer, you cannot hurt a Twinkie. Also, why does an undead minion of Satan need to eat? So this is it, Moreau's happy place. Narration obviously added because we had no f***ing clue where they were going. Discount Christopher Lamp, holy sh Why can't he come with us? No! After a burger and a ride on the back of a truck, this child of Satan decides to treat Ghost Rider Dude as his father because hastened character development is hastened. The only thing that can hurt you and your mom now is me. Well, no, because all Danny has to do is say, don't hurt me, and your fire goes out. So, not really. It'll be all right. I promise. Unkeepable promises. This bottle would fetch 50,000 euros at an auction. Euros. Zarados was an angel. A spirit of justice. So here's something our animators whipped up real quick, because Sony only gave us one roll of film. Brought down to hell. Corrupted. And down in hell, something about war, money, and women on Earth. Something something stock footage. He became... The spirit of vengeance. Roll credits. You must confess the one thing that is most difficult for you to talk about. Well, that sounds like some pulled out of a hat mystical mumbo jumbo if I've ever heard it. And I have. This is the Lamb of God. Also known as the Loaf of Bread. Also, movie wants me to take communion with Stringer Bell. Where you go now, I cannot follow. Movie rips off the Luke faces its demons thing from The Empire Strikes Back. Sealed off underground cave has a lot of f***ing light. Spiritual MRI. Also, the Ghost Rider goes through some sort of experience that's changing him and I guess things are happening. That's how I would explain it to a kid anyway. Hey! What are you doing? Johnny wakes up from his religious experience just in time to insert himself back into the plot. Ah, you lied to me. Yeah, Methodius is kind of a prick for lying to Moreau like that. But the guy has scriptures written on his face, man. Did you really think it would protect the son of Satan? Circle jerk. You know, if you assholes weren't so tied to the ritual killing, you could have been done with this an hour ago. How did Kerrigan know where to find all these assholes? Also, what is it with the timing of all the assholes in this movie? When they start their trip, they are exactly the distance away they need to be to stop something at the last second. It's astounding how ooey bowl bad this movie is. This came from a major studio. How many good scripts were turned down to make this piece of shit? Actually, how many good scripts upon hearing of this movie's existence simply died, like literally disintegrated in the writer's hands as he or she went into a studio to pitch it, and scripts stored on computers downloaded a cell virus and left a suicide letter on Notepad. It's gotta be scores of them, right? Some protectors you turned out to be. Like you were doing a better job on your own? At least they f***ing tried to help, man. This is a day of prophecy. Movie was unable to resist talk of a prophecy and introduces it two-thirds through the movie. The child must be in his 13th year. Because at an arbitrary age like 13, which sounds like a milestone in the human world even though it isn't, is just as important in the demon world. There will be no more Danny. Only rock. No! Why the hell didn't you tell us this, Moreau? Hey. Actually, the only reason he didn't tell you is because this is a movie. In case you confused it with Uzak Gokten, Alabama. Not disintegrating. Not disintegrating. Who's that Gokten? The farthest point from heaven. <laughs> Seriously? Also, take that, turkey. Do we really expect these weapons to work against the devil? Or are these just going to make the movie really loud in a few minutes? I wanted to know why I look this way. Think of the, the flamethrower. In-apt analogy is made just so we can revisit footage of the f***ing flame pee. Drug-based devil cheating. These three people are all climbing rocks, yet none of them is Tom Cruise. Politicians, murderers, people of influence. The devil's soldiers. Movie tries to shoehorn in some half-assed comment on politicians and rich people being the devil's soldiers. And while I'm sure you'll get many to agree with that assessment, it's not like your movie's been planting all this brilliant subtext throughout that makes this pay off in any way. If a rock succeeds, it will have a new form, one more powerful than he's ever known, and a shadow will fall upon the earth. Oh shit, you meant immediately! That shadow fell f***ing quick! The world's politicians, murderers, and people of influence who would want to see the anointing of a new evil king are basically the number of people who came to see Terminator Genesis on opening weekend. Jesus Christ, the fact that any of this shit needs to be done to ensure someone becomes the Antichrist is a sin on its own. Also, the devil is doing this because he needs a younger body, but why didn't he impregnate some woman in trouble a lot sooner? This guy has lived for thousands of years, right? This can't be a new thing to him. And surely there are plenty of women who would do anything to improve their lives, even if it meant taking in some demon seed. Does Johnny Blaze have any kind of experience or fighting skills outside of his Ghost Rider self that would allow him to infiltrate, oh, Satan's kid's confirmation ceremony with no problem? These guards do nothing at all. 
Nothing. Nick Cage without superpowers infiltrating a weird ritual? This movie is National Treasure 3 whether or not it wants to be. Welcome back to our continued coverage of the Antichrist Yoga Ceremony. We take you live to young Danny, who appears to be getting his first installment of evil on a glorious night of Satanism. We now take you to Salman Rushdie and get some of his insight. Salman? Also, when the interruption in a ceremony such as this happens, does the underworld give you a free pass? Do they understand? Or does it highlight the silliness that you ever needed a ceremony in the first place? The Devil's Kid uses devil powers to somehow make Johnny the Ghost Rider again. But I thought the ceremony wasn't over. How does he have this kind of power right now if he hasn't completely turned yet? No! By the way, I thought he could only be the Ghost Rider at night, because so many times he chooses not to pursue bad guys for some dumb reason. But here he is, crack of dawn, chasing down evil. <laughs> Ghost Rider Victim Wilhelm. Oh, f*** you. I was never afraid of you! Ghost Rider suddenly gets a boost of energy because of taunting. Broken. Oh my god. Also, when you hear the Ghost Rider spout one-liners, you wonder why Johnny was ever worried that he'd hurt Danny and his mom. Never once do we see him go after someone innocent in these two movies, which would have been a cool aspect of the story, but oh well. Dumb sh is dumb, yo. What do you make of a scene where a flaming skeleton flips over a car containing Satan and his son, except that no one in the scene is actually in danger? Go! Oh. Be prepared to witness the longest chain ever. I don't give a if it's supernatural or not. This chain is off the chain. The movie thinks it's keeping anyone in suspense as to whether Danny is going to die in this movie. Bro, since the writer was an angel that went crazy. <laughs> and to accentuate that, I'm going to show you what an angel looks like when it goes Nicolas Cage. Ghost Rider finds the angel inside of him ex machina. By the way, after what we heard about the angel earlier, is one of his powers bringing people back to life? My name is Johnny Blaze. Just in case you haven't heard that several times throughout two movies so far. It required two directors to direct this movie. And when I touched her skin, my fingers ran with blood. All that power. Itty bitty love space. There can be only one. Oh, no, no more thing you already have. Delauded. Uh, Valium, what do you got? Drugs! What did they give you? Thorazine? Haldol? How much? How much? Learn your drugs. Know your doses. It's elementary. A coffee shop. What's wrong with that? Nobody ever robs restaurants, bars, liquor stores, gas stations. You get your head blown off sticking out one of them. Can you learn stuff that you haven't been programmed with so you can be, you know, more human and not such a dork all the time? My CPU is a neural net processor, a learning computer. But Skynet presets the switch to read only when we are sent out alone. I think we better get indoors. The sand people are easily startled, but they'll soon be back, and in greater numbers. You're safe here. We made it. Now that we've made it, we've made it to the top. The pen is blue! Is out there another 